On tap today we have two door panels with bullet holes. You can see on this panel the bullet came from the back side and out the face of the panel. On the other panel the bullet went in the face and out the back side. Now on the first panel we see that there's also damage on the stanchion that held the upholstery clip. So we've got some work to do. So after our initial prep step, we have to cut the vinyl on this door panel in order to get out all the plastic pieces. And to get everything in the video, we're going to speed through every repair process. So I'm going to put a piece of tape here in preparation for working on the face. And there we are, something to hold the plastic as I weld it in and let's keep these flaps down with a little bit of masking tape. The black plastic on these panels is made of ABS and so that's going to allow me to use my white ABS rod. This way we know we're going to get a good solid bond. So I want to bring this just up to level and no more. And for good measure, let's put a little plastic around on the back side of it. Now on door panel number two, there are two layers. We just need to weld in ABS plastic on the black layer. Now on panel number one, I've elected to glue the flaps of vinyl down and just keep something flat moving on it while it's curing. And then we can sand this with a hundred grit sandpaper. Next, I'm heating the vinyl and going to flatten that with the chill bar just to make sure everything is nice and flat. We don't want any surprises later with something not adhering and rising up. Sanding with a block is helpful in these kinds of situations as well. Now look around and whatever you see that's got a straight edge on it, grab that and just make absolutely sure that everything in this repair area is either at grade or below grade. It's so important to have nothing sticking up above grade at this point. How many times have you finished something and found that you had a hump in it and ended up having to sand down all the work you had done? On panel number two, I'm doing a similar thing. I'm just putting a little glue in here to hold the vinyl down. Now for extra measure, any high spots, I'm just taking down with the grinding tool. I'm going to do the same on these ridges just to make sure they don't interfere with anything later on. And now we've elected here to use a two-part flexible epoxy. The reason for the epoxy on this repair is that we're going to be, well, allowed, the first thing is to put it on nice and flat with the Bondo spreader but we can also sand it perfectly flat, or at least we could say perfectly with the right contour for the panel. Using a hot kind of repair, 
is uh, fraught with dangers here because uh, the heat distorts the vinyl and we never can be sure exactly how that's going to lie down. With the epoxy, we know it's going to lie down perfectly flat. We can sand it perfectly flat so we can manipulate the contour of the epoxy. And two coats of epoxy is very typical in this kind of an application, I think. The first coat will fill in the major gaps and pockets, and the second coat will let you feather it for that finished product. Use your judgment when block sanding here, whether you want to start a little bit with 100 grit or whether you want to go straight to the 220 grit. Every operation will be a little different, uh, but uh, if your second application was good, then 220 might give you what you need. And you can try sanding it dry and see if that gives you a little bit of a different result. Okay, now it's time to really get a better look at our progress. As you know, we use a guide coat. This will be a sanding guide coat. We sand the color away. And uh, wherever there's still color showing, that's a low spot, right? Actually, at this stage, it's looking pretty good. So at this point, I'd be asking myself, is texture going to take care of the rest of it? If so, then we can move right on to the next uh, spraying steps. But of course we need to prep everything that's going to receive the masking tape. I like to prep with acetone where I can. The tape is more sure to stick with uh, an acetone prep. The acetone dries fully, really quickly, and leaves absolutely no residue. And that's why the tape sticks so well. If you have trouble with the tape sticking, go ahead and just prep it again and uh, come back after a few seconds and give it another go. Now I've got my color already mixed up with the correct uh, pigments to match. It's not necessarily black here. It's got a quite a brownish look to it, so we've had to adjust it from a pure black. And we've also adjusted the sheen so that it matches the sort of the satin uh, look of the panel. And so the first step here is a very wide or very deep uh, texture step. Notice I'm curing that right away. I'm using the heat gun to set it up really quickly. And I'm going to lightly sand over that there with the 400 grit so that my first uh, initial texture steps are usually uh, very large, very deep. And then the second uh, texture step is going to be more medium. It's the combination of the two that usually works well on these panels. This is the same thing you would do, say, on a dash pad as well. Okay. 
So when building the texture, you have to use your judgment. Uh, how does it feel? How does it look? Does it need to be heavier and bolder? Does it need to be a little finer? You can always hit it with the 400 and, and go another coat to make it uh, a me another medium coat or a finer coat, whatever it needs. Just use your discretion on this uh, kind of a circumstance. It's not all going to spray the texture you want on the first coat. You're going to have to build it layer by layer. The nice thing about the plastic primer as a base is that it stands up tough. You can use the hair dryer or a heat gun to set it and immediately you can sand on it and it'll stand up to sanding with 400 grit. I've also got a cross linker in it by the way and that helps with the strength of it. When you've got the texture about to your liking you want to blend it out just a little bit. Quite often on the last texture step, I will not sand it. We'll leave it just a little bit rounded, pebbly, but usually that's just on the final texture application. Here I'm blending in around just to make sure there are no telltale signs as far as where we began and where we ended on our repair. Now gearing up for our final color step, we want to make sure that we spray our final color from the north, south, east, and west. Because if we have texture, we're apt to get color just on one side of the texture. We want to get the texture, the final color, on all sides. Now because we're using the color as our texture, it's not quite as important, but it will affect the look of the overall sheen here. And when you speak of sheen, when you're spraying a fine mist and drying down immediately, you're going to get more of a matte finish. If you spray it a little heavier and don't dry it down immediately, then it tends to lie and flow a little better and have a little bit more of a satin look to it. So use that idea for blending the final sheen to the original panel. You can regulate how it blends by how you apply it. So now it's time for removing the masking tape and also uh, there is some overspray because I I got uh, a little careless. Uh, I didn't mind if I went a little wide. I can always clean that up right away. When you're using a water base, as long as you get on it right away, it cleans up like nothing to it, just like puffed wheat. And so there we got the face of panel one and panel two. So now we've got uh, one more repair to do, and that's this broken stanchion or this broken standoff that accommodates that upholstery clip. Now this tan colored plastic is a polypropylene polyethylene blend. It just so happens that I have in stock a donor door panel of the same materials. So what I'm going to do is cut a piece of the donor door panel that I can use to fill in and support this upholstery clip holder. So we're going to have to do some fooling around to get this thing fabricated to something usable. Of 
A little at a time and we'll get there. This is the part that gets bent over because this is going to hold that clip in place. Beautiful. Yeah, right. Adding a few staples can help you hold it so that you can fuse the plastic together better. Thank goodness this is functional and doesn't have to look very pretty at all. And now to make room for the clip. Like a glove. Unfortunately, repairing bullet holes in automobiles is not that uncommon. I'm going to assume that this driver barely escaped with his life. So I had three repairs, in and out on the driver's seat, and then one in on the passenger seat. And now let's finish up the day with two artists. This master artist left us with a fiery red sunset. In fact, I had to go make sure that the neighbor's house wasn't actually on fire. And the next artist was the sushi chef. I think it's good to reward yourself for a good day's work or a good week's work. What kind of food do you reward yourself with? Send me a short video clip and we'll include that. The email's in the description box. Thanks for joining in.